it's literally the best video I've ever come across as far as all the benefits that Zeolite has that very few people know about. They have a lot of filler in there as well. So this is the best uh, information I've ever found on Zeolite. Let me know what you think down below. Peace. Our issues aren't derived from what we're putting in. Our issues are really derived from the stuff that's in us that we need to get out. And that goes back to what the World Health Organization had really proven in 1974. They said about 80 to 85 percent of all chronic degenerative diseases were caused by environmental toxins. It could be heavy metals. It could be other environmental toxins, PCBs, glyphosate. You can go down the list. They cause a cascade of symptomology that can have a myriad of diagnoses over time in a single patient. So if you come up with mechanisms just to treat the symptoms, you can do really well. And welcome to the pharmaceutical industry. Um, but what we also know is if you find effective means of removing those issues, that people can be well and not have the symptomology that one suspects to get with the aging process, the class of minerals called zeolites and specifically clinoptilolite are what nature has created to clean the environment. Whether you look at clinoptilolite or bentonite or a couple others have been very well published and proven for their, their mechanism for environmental detoxification as well as gastrointestinal detoxification. Now we're talking about clinoptilolite and zeolite. What, 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 what happens there? Why, why are there two different names there? So zeolites are the class. So it's kind of like having a Ford Mustang. The Mustang is the specific version, it's the vehicle. Ford is the, the class. So zeolites are a class of minerals, you know, volcanic minerals that are formed from different, different chemical processes from volcanic eruptions that have formed in different areas of the world. So if you're familiar with Iceland and they have the, the hot springs and they have the really healing mud that's in the hot springs in Iceland, that's bentonite. Okay. So clinoptilolite, is found in you know, numerous parts of the world in different deposits. And it's a quartz-like crystal that acts like a molecular sieve to where it has this very porous honeycomb cage structure that is negatively charged. So it acts like a magnet to bind you know, positively charged heavy metals and other environmental toxins in the environment. It's the reason that the Romans used it to line the aqueducts so they didn't die of lead poisoning. And, and when they didn't use it, we got Nero. And it's the reason that when Chernobyl melted down, that they dropped a half million tons of the powder over the meltdown site because of its ability to bind cesium and strontium. They've used it in Three Mile Island. They used it in Hanford. They've used it in Oak Ridge. They used it in Fukushima. Uh, so it's very well published, very well proven. And it's, and, and it's the, but the problems that we have today in our population are because of women and 12 women just shrugged and, and shrieked because they, um, they don't want to hear that per se, but it, it's a fact because when a woman's pregnant, when she's burning fat to create the energy to, to grow a fetus, those toxins and chemicals that are also stored in that fat start circulating in her system. And as a means of protection of her own body, her body will push a lot of those toxins into the fetus. That's where miscarriage rates have become so high, but seldomly talked about because there's still a stigma behind it. But it's also the reason that we've got kids that are extremely sensitive when they're born. You've got the ADD, ADHD, autism, Asperger's, OCD, behavioral issues, learning disorders, and it all corresponds to different levels of environmental toxins depending upon the area of the, of the country or the area of the world that the, the mother grew up in or was in and where her family came from because this environmental issue is, is transgenerational. It's passed down maternally. Right, so how can utilizing the, the um, fragments here actually help get those detox or the toxins out of the body then? This mineral is, is really unique because it's generally recognized as safe as a food additive. So you can consume a lot of it and it can't hurt you. The fragments can get into, into the bloodstream, can permeate fat cells and different cells. And there's some evidence that it's crossing the blood brain barrier. And because they're passive nature and they don't have any natural binding sites, it has no place to stick. So it will go in, it'll grab onto what it can trap the bad stuff. There's conversations that because it's naturally negatively charged, that it will bind, you know, the essential metals as well, the calciums, magnesiums, potassiums, the sodiums, which it will, but because of their lighter charge, 
and their lighter molecular weight, it will actually cationically exchange those lighter metals for the heavy metals. So the mercuries, the cadmiums, arsenic, leads, aluminum, cesium, strontium, and such. So it will hold on to the bad guys and allow them to be passively removed because it'll come out through kidneys and liver and you just pee it out. And the nice mm -hmm. part is, is because it's trapped everything, you're not worried about causing any other toxicity issues to your detoxifying organs, you actually get a, a process where you're detoxifying your detoxifying organs because as those fragments go through your kidneys, they have some binding space left over and they're grabbing toxins that are in your in your kidneys. And even if you're doing a lot of the right things, you're still coming across many toxins in the workplace. And, and I mean, it, everything is full of toxins. And it's interesting because I just spoke to a, a group of ladies the other day who are, it was a big weight loss group that I spoke to. And all of them are really trying to lose weight. But one of the things is, is that comes up quite often is, hey, I'm trying to lose weight. I'm doing all the right things, but I still can't lose that weight. And many of these women are very toxic. And so when they start losing the weight, they, you know, eventually because of the hormone disruption from all the toxins in their system and everything else, they, they come to a standstill. I mean, I feel like at one point it was a matter of putting some things in, you know, whether it was better nutrients and, and uh, nutrients that were lacking, whatever the case was. But now it's a matter of actually getting out those toxins before you can actually go in and try to really, you know, get to the to the next stage of healing with people. When you look at the fad diets and, you know, the different, I've had friends that have lost a lot of weight, a lot of inches, different diets and whatnot. And they've called and said, hey, I have MS symptoms now. And mm -hmm. it all corresponds to, you know, losing all this weight. And it's because the fat is a storage medium for those chemicals and those toxins that are in your system because your body has to sequester that away from your organs and away from your brain. And if you burn off the fat, you release all those toxins. And specifically, mercury shuts off the methylation process. It shuts down glutathione production. So our body's natural detoxification pathways don't work. And that's the nasty part of this stuff is you have these toxins that we want to get out, but they shut off your body's ability to, to remove it naturally. So they get stored. And then when you're trying to remove this stuff, you have to find a way to bind it while it's still in the body. Because if you mobilize it, it's, it's going to cause disruptions. And don't, if you don't do the subtraction, the addition is never going to cause as much of a benefit as it could without doing them in combination. You have to get rid of the bad stuff while you're putting in the good stuff. One, because you can remove the blockages from nutrient binding sites and hormone binding sites by using something that can work at a, at a cellular level to remove those blockages. That, but then by adding proper nutrition, you know, proper supplements, proper diet, the nutrients that you're putting in are able to get to the areas where they need to go to be effective. So you've got to do both. It's clinotillite's been proven to, to bind heavy metals. It'll bind molds like black mold. It's one of the few things that'll bind glyphosate, which is a whole other show on its own with the ability to actually remove and bind glyphosate. It's been shown to be used for Agent Orange. Um, you've got Lyme and not the spirochetes themselves. And this is a really important aspect of Lyme disease because and it's those those little guys that the that clinoptilolite is actually able to bind. You've got you know other PCBs, other environmental toxins, trichloroethylene. You can go down a long list of different chemicals yeah. that the mineral has the ability to bind. So it's not just heavy metals. It it's really a lot of the worst stuff that we have to deal with environmentally today. God did a pretty good job of giving us everything we needed when we needed it. We just have to figure it out. I think it was, was it Og Mandino that said, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. The native philosophy of understanding nature and where there's a problem, there's a cure. We I have patients coming to me all the time and they say, yeah, I did a detox, so I don't need to, you know, detox any further with you. And, you know, they might have all these different symptoms and like diabetes or arthritis and you know, all types of inflammatory conditions. And they start talking about their liver cleanse and their Mm -hmm. you know, foot baths and they're, you know, they, they, there's all these different types of cleanses that people are using and they're calling those a detox. And so, you know, I, I, I find this to be, you know, the only real way to do a good solid detox. Most people, when they, they, they symbolize detox, it's, it's a connotation that isn't typically well, well accepted because there's negative, negative thoughts that come along with that. If it's spending a half hour on the toilet or having to go away for a week and spend a lot of money on a retreat and sit in a tent that's too hot, 
those those mechanisms are typically GI, kidney, liver, and lymph, like you touched on, um, which there is benefit to. I mean, I'm a I'm a huge proponent of you know liver liver and kidney cleanses and colon hydrotherapy and um, infrared saunas. I work really closely with a, a friend of mine that uh, has some of the best infrared saunas on the market, and I strongly strongly encourage the use of those. But when you're looking at a cellular basis, you need something that goes deeper than that. You've got a product that is able to to work at a a bloodstream cellular subcellular level and then you've got the rest of the mechanisms that are working on an organ organ or um, lymphatic level so both are good but they're different and one one of those methods the GI kidney liver stuff you can do on occasion is and that it shouldn't be a process that is averse to the body and you shouldn't feel terrible when you're doing it it should be passive because if you're if you're removing metals properly you don't want to do it heavily at one time because you're obviously going to be mobilizing things that you can't get out which is going to lead to sequestration issues later on so it's it's the process of slowly peeling an onion you go layer layer by layer instead of just cutting it and chopping it all up and, uh, some people some people are okay hitting it hard quick you know that's the one thing i've done but because of the mechanism, there's nothing wrong with starting low and titrating up. And so then how often should it be used? You kind of mentioned that you want to stick with it and stay with it. So is that the case that you want to use it over a long period of time? Or is this a one month type of deal? Or how does that work? If I had an option, it would be womb to tomb. The, the easiest explanation is if our environmental exposure ever went down to zero, you, you could stop. Now you might not have to use it as often over time and you might not use as much or you might use more in different at different points in time due to exposure or just due to how how you might cycle with it over time our environmental exposure is never going to get any better and with that being said alone it's something that you should continually use and Theoretically, if we were able to ever 100% clean up our bodies and and then eliminate our environmental exposure, you could say, "Hey, I don't I don't need to do anything like this anymore." But we're never going to get to that point. You know, right. if if we just look at Fukushima and what Fukushima's done, we're pretty well nuked. <laughs> All right, one last question I want to bring you or or, or um, bring up here on the topic of detoxification, and that's what is the big difference between DMSA and then what we're using with the fragments? DMSA is kind of like taking a hammer and a chisel or a jackhammer and going through and knocking a bunch of stuff loose and then leaving. And because it's, it's very, very effective at mobilizing a lot of metals. It'll mobilize a lot of mercury. And with its ability to, to cross the blood brain barrier in some aspects, you you mobilize a lot of metal. Problem, problem is, like we've touched on, our body's natural detox pathways are inefficient to remove all of that stuff. And that's, that's where you run the risk of getting people sick from doing too much. And you take the alternative where you've got a natural molecular sieve that will go in and grab onto stuff. Now, if you, if you wanted to have a lot of fun, you could use them in tandem where you have one mechanism that is basically shaking up the snow globe per se, and then you you can throw in another compound that will suck it all up. And that's the difference between the two is you have like DMPS and DMSA that will that will mobilize a lot, which is why it's been used for challenge tests for heavy metal excretion so often, is it will it'll mobilize so much metal that you will excrete a lot. Not everything, but you'll you'll excrete a lot. I'm not a big fan of that. Because if I was doing a urine analysis on me, I'd want to look at what my body is naturally excreting. And then I would want to use some protocols that are effective in the remediation of that. I'd want to use that for a short period of time and then do a, a follow-up urine challenge test to see what the difference was from doing nothing to doing something versus putting a lot of force into my body to to mobilize a bunch of stuff and then see what comes out. But they have different different mechanisms, different effects. One, one is good at 
knocking a bunch of stuff loose. The other one is very good at going in passively, grabbing onto what it can, binding it, and then leaving passively. Okay, gotcha. And what kind of results are you seeing with this? I, I mean, that's it. And I'm then question or the comment that I made initially, if you understand the etiology of a problem, and I don't care if it's autism, Alzheimer's and anything in between. And if you can remove what's causing the issue, you won't have the symptomology or it will be dramatically decreased. So, right, we are the greatest biological organism ever created besides. <laughs> and we've been polluted to a point where we have calcified pineal glands and all these other issues. So we're we're not as special as we can be. But if you can remove the the, the toxins, the glyphosates, viral, the spirochetes and everything else that are causing our issues, if you can remove those and the byproducts of them, the symptomology that people have synonymous with a lot of the diagnoses won't be there anymore. Mm -hmm. I've, I've seen plenty of that because if you remove the cause, you won't have any symptoms. I can't.